Hello guys, this is Royal 69501 and welcome to my channel. Uh, and welcome to my Monday. Mondays, the joy of doing nothing day. Oh yeah. And not only that, but finally today the sun the sun came out. Uh, today looks like a, it's gonna be a sunny day. So hopefully we'll keep that way. Oh yeah. So I can go to the beach today. I haven't gone to the beach about what two weeks maybe? Yeah, it's been raining ever since. So uh I guess you all know. Now I don't know if I already um, displayed this comic book or not. I don't remember. But uh, if I did, I apologize. And this one is the Ghost Rider and Blades, Spirit of Vengeance, issue number two. Bang, you're dead. Check that out. Awesome, huh? So I go over here. Okay, come on. Come on. Stay. Okay, well, I hope that everybody, everybody had an excellent weekend. And I wish everybody to have an excellent week. So mine, well, it was work, work, work. But today is my day off. Uh, well, uh, let's see. These videos where I'm gonna give you my thoughts and reviews of the comic books of last week. Uh, so I'm gonna start with. Air 2 Annual Number 1. Check that out. Pretty cool cover. Well, ah, what can I say about this comic book? Air 2 and now The Darkest Night. Well, this this was basically was like an, an, an origin comic book because it started giving you the origin of the Adam. Get the origin, the origin of him, how he got his powers, and also we get to see Batman, but doesn't tell you anything about the Batman, so we don't know who he is, where he comes from. Nothing. He just appears. Poof. That's it. So he's. Uh, so the thing about Batman is being very secret, which I think is good. You know, it, it gives the comic book a little bit of mystery. And also we get to see Mr. Miracle in there. We get to see Big Barda. And we get to see Batman fighting a villain named Mr. Icicle. Which I believe is uh, kind of like a version of Mr. Freeze on Earth 2. Because actually it looks like Mr. Freeze from the TV show back in the 90s. That's what, you know, skinny with with uh, goggles. So, uh, now on this Batman here, he's not afraid to kill. He's not afraid to use guns. He, he has to, or bombs, you know, he doesn't care about life. I, I mean, this, uh, this Batman here, he's very, he's very ruthless. I mean, he doesn't believe in that and in Batman, in life at all. If he has to kill, he kills, that's it. And also I noticed that on Earth 2 is gonna be the comic book where we're gonna where the where we gonna see or it's gonna be introduced to the new 52, the new gods universe. You know, Apocalypse and the new Genesis, High Father. So I believe it's gonna be between Earth 2 and Wonder Woman. Although there is two from two different universes, but I believe that here we're gonna have a full, full introduction of the new gods, which I hope. Because I'm dying to read new gods, see High Father, uh, High Father, and all those characters, and the conflict between New, New Genesis, and Apocalypse, Dark Side. Oh yeah. So overall, it was. It was good. It was good. 
nothing I mean it's not like to go overboard because you know yeah although he shows Batman but Batman here has been a mystery so also you see which I forgot to mention is that you see Batman like from the distance keeping an eye from for the for the for the superheroes on the Earth 2 so it was it, it was good not to go overboard but it was good you want to know the origin of Adam and you want to see Big Barda and Mr. Miracle uh, Scott Free Mr. Miracle so it's good <clears throat> like I said it's not to go overboard so for me it's a uh, four out of five it was good next one is Green Lantern issue number 20 check that out finally got to read it yeah. and I have to say that it was good I really like it and the best part is it's a long read and no advertising maybe one or two pages that's about it but God it was a long read wow felt like I was reading a mini trade paperback Wow, that that book has a lot of read. Whew. But you don't get bored. That's the good thing about it. You don't get bored at all. Well, at least in my case, I get it. Well, they are basically what you... Well, the issue number 20 is the last issue of the writer, James Jones. Saying goodbye to the Green Lantern universe. So... You get to see the backstory of the future because it starts in the future telling the story about to a new Green Lantern recruit telling the story about Hal Jordan. That's on the future, which the, which the story is taking place on the present. So that was interesting. Uh, Actually, tells you everything. It's the conclusion of the of the wrath of the first lantern. There was a lot of good fights there. It was good. It was good. It has a lot of things in it. And also, you get to see what happened to each member of the Green Lantern in the future. What happened to Samuel Bass, Hal Jordan, uh, Guy Garner, Sinestro, and John Stewart. You get to see what happened to them in the future. So, basically, it's a close chapter of the whole universe of the Green Lantern since Jeff Jones took over nine or ten years ago. So now the new writers. So, uh, so from issue number twenty-one is where the new creator teams will start a new storyline. So it does, they don't need to follow what happened here. In a way. But it's not, it's like they can start from a clean, uh, clean start. So, now the new creator teams has the liberty to create good stories. They don't have to follow what Jeff Jones did. Uh, it's a 5 out of 5. Like I said, it's a long read. But I enjoy every single page, every single panel, every single balloon. It was a fun read. I mean, that's a big oh yeah. <laughs> but it's good. That's a five out of five. So then after that, and then we got the epilogue, which I haven't read it yet. And I think I got the, which are this one over here. You know, all the, all the epilogue which I'm going to read them today, and which I believe there is no specific order to read the epilogue. So basically, it's the, this is the, the epilogue, basically, is, uh, which I understand just by common sense, uh, that is the consequences of what happened for each character on the present, right now. So I'm going to read it today. Hey, it's my day off, so I'm going to read comic books today. Uh, well, next one is Snyder and, Mo and Sni it's Monday. 
Snyder and Murphy. They're weak. Check this out. Nice cover. Love the love this cover. And what I like about the cover is the way that, that they did or they wrote the 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 word weak. No, I like it. Well, <clears throat> basically, Wake is that uh, it's a company that's doing illegal hush hush stuff, and they search for this scientist that she's an expert of whale sounds. That's a name for it, which I don't remember. Uh, <clears throat> it's a mystery horror on the water adventure. It's like, uh, it reminds me a little bit of this movie from the 90s, Leviathan, that is on the water, kind of like that. And we get to see some, and you have a good cliffhanger. It was a good story. I, I have to say that I really like it. It felt like, I mean, in my case, when I, when I read it, I feel like I'm watching a movie. This it didn't feel like a comic book. It felt like I was reading the script of a movie. Because it was good, I really like it. I really like it. I'm looking forward to issue number two. But it was good. It's like it's yes, if you like science fiction, if you like sci-fi, underwater adventure and mystery, horror, politics, and a lot of hush hush. Underwater, well, that's a comic book for you. So I don't want to say too, too much because I don't want to spoil it. But I love the end of it. And that's part one of ten. So the whole the whole story is gonna take it's gonna take ten comic books. <clears throat> but it was a good story. It was really good. I really like it. That's a five out of five because I find the story to be original. In the sense, well, yes, it reminds me a little bit of the movie Leviathan. But other than that, kind of like, uh, yeah, I find the, the story to be original. And the way that this was written, I mean, the way when you, when you read it, how the story flows by itself. You don't get bored, you don't have to, you don't get confused like, okay, what happened here or where this came from. Just point A to B. Just a smooth read, and I like smooth read. Oh, so for me, Wake is a five out of five. So if you want to find, you want to read something different, out outside of superheroes, I guess you might like Wake. Give it a try. You might like it. Uh, next one is Just to Sleep America issue number four. Well, this is the continuation of issue number three, where Catwoman, she managed to get inside of secret society organization as a spy. And things goes wrong. Uh, it was okay story. I'm not going to say that it was that great, because it was not. It was an okay story. Like the end of it, like what happened to. It was interesting for what happened to Catwoman. Uh, mm, oh, uh, let me check so I can refresh my memory. Uh, they got their own. We get to see their own plane, they managed to have their own plane, and we get to see how we got a little bit backstory of Mansion Manhunter. We get to see that Stargirl, she trying to take, uh, she wants to prove to Amanda Weller that she's a superhero and not just a pretty face for public relations or for their team. And let's see, uh, we get to see like a giant, they get to fight like a, like a, like a creature, looks like a jetty, which I'm going to show you. The art is great, I like the art, really like the art. 
And I have to say that they changed the colorist of Skin Randolph. Yes, I think that they changed the colorist because on the previous issue it used to be a little bit dark, but this one has more light colors. Hey, it's a team. I mean, this is the this is the Justice League. I can't wait for this. I can't wait to have this book on my hand. Which I believe is this, this week or I think it's next week. Uh, so we get to see what happens to Catwoman. And it was pretty graphic. And we get to see uh, we have a backstory of Martian, Martian Manhunter. Kind of like his origin, which it was interesting. Seems like a little bit better than the one that we knew before, like on the TV show or the comic books from back from the 90s, in my case. So, they're making here Machine Man Hunter more, more ruthless. Which I don't know why he's here when he's on Justice League. So, I don't know. I don't know. But it was good, it was good. It was good. It's a four out of five. So it was good. Interesting. So uh, the last comic book is uh, X-Men issue number one. Check that out. Awesome. Well, this is, well, the old female X-Men. And basically, the whole story is kind of like, uh, well, everybody in the X-Men has school. We got Wolverine has his own school. Now we have Storm. So almost every other member of the X-Men open their own school. So for the gifted children. So basically, this is the book about Jubilee and the baby, which the baby is not hers. So the baby, some baby, it's an orphan baby. So we get to see the story, backstory of twin brothers that they've been separated. Uh, and the baby has powers to control machines or technology. And uh, what I like about X Men is at least on that particular issue was that it didn't, for me, it did not feel like an X-Men book. I mean, at least in my case, I haven't read any of the X-Men recently, but I remember the X-Men back in the 90s where, where uh, the X-Men used to have a lot of philosophy, uh, make love, not war, really yeah, it has a lot of philosophy in it. Think between uh, before you act. That thing about that's what made X Men what it was. But here on X Men number one, which is all female X Men, female X Men, felt like a regular team book. At least for me. I don't know, maybe on issue number two, we get to see a little bit more. X-Men philosophy on this book, but at least on the first one, feel like just a, reg a, a regular team. It's like they didn't have that philosophy from Professor Xavier. At least that's the X-Men that, that I remember back from the 90s. Uh, but it felt like just like a regular team book. Is it? And it was good. I have to say, it was good. I'm looking forward to issue number two. And I like the cliffhanger of issue number one. Well, actually, I'm buying issue number two because I'm curious of who or what is the person that appears on issue number two on the end of it, which was good. And let's see what else. That's about it, you know? Now, yeah, we get to see Storm that she got her mohawk back. So, which is fine. Uh, it was four. Uh, it was a 4.5 out of 5. It was good. It was good. It was okay. Looking forward for issue number two. So, the comics that I need to read. 
which I'm going to read it today, uh, is Justice League 20, which I believe I remember what it's about, but I think I had to read issue number 19. And Batgirl number 20, which this one looks good. So I need to read, yep, about three, four, five, five comic books. I need to, to read. So, well, guys, oh, yeah. Uh, let me see if I can. Yeah, there was something that I, have, that I forgot to do. That I haven't done in a while, and remember that I used to choose the best cover and the best story. Well, I'm gonna start doing that maybe next week on my next video. I might start doing that. I'm gonna, I'm going back to you know choosing the best cover and the best qualities and the best writer. So I'm gonna start doing it. Uh, if not next week, the week after that. Uh, I, I stopped doing it because since, since I was going, I was falling behind on my on my comic book buying. So, eh. So now that I am up to date now, so I'm gonna start doing it maybe next week or the week after that. I'm going back to do my my three categories, or maybe I just go down to two categories. And eh, we'll see. Well, guys, this is it. I hope that you like the video. Till later.